Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for December 3rd, 2021. Well, doggone it. Yesterday, we just had a really, really good relief rally. And I, I say doggone it because we made some great money in it in RWO yesterday. Uh, nice little rally. It sustained. We kind of shrugged off some of the volatility here. And now the question is, will that relief rally continue? Well, how about we take a look at these charts and see if we can get an idea how we might want to approach the day and get ready for the Friday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. We've made some really good money this week, even though the market has been um, quite, um, quite volatile and very challenging. But now the question remains, at how will we deal with these resistance levels above? And we have a big data um, coming out, a big data number that could determine that direction for today. So first off, let's take a look at our chart and what we've got going on. We do have to remember here, guys, that we still have downtrends in the chart. And this downtrend right here is actually so steep it's probably not sustainable, and that's why I think we could get a little bit more relief rally, assuming that employment situation number is a good one. Now, if we take a look right in here, we have some considerable price resistance in the chart that we're going to have to deal with here um, this morning, and if we're going to rally. So kind of keep in mind, if that employment situation number was to come in very bullish, that might help us push on through that level of price resistance in the chart. If it happens to disappoint, though, that could be a little bit of a barrier and actually bring out some bears. So watch that closely. And then keep in mind, as we rally, we've got a little bit of resistance in this gap right here. We've got some significant resistance as we move up here in the Dow right in that area. Whether or not we'll be able to push on through that area, that'll be the question in that chart. And whether we can get back through that downtrend. So let's watch that closely. There is a still quite a little bit of uncertainty out there that we have to deal with um, when it comes to this variant. And then let's take a look at our moving average. Now, uh, moving averages. Now we got back above our 200 day moving average and that's a good sign. But one of the things um, that we cannot forget, can't forget to, that the possibility exists. Um, just notice over here in September, when we push down, um, it's very, very common we will rally back and then have another test of the low. So is that possible? Now, what I would rather see than a big push back to just retest the lows, be really nice if we just rested up here or pulled back to test that 200-day moving average. We need to spill off some of this volatility because of the, the wild uh, price action moves are making it very, very challenging for folks. So I would honestly like to see a little bit of market rest in here. Don't know that I'm going to get that, but as we approach resistance levels in the chart, one of the things I wanted to point out, as we push back right up into that little gap area, we notice we've got our 50 day moving average and our 34 EMA is pushing down rather sharply and will likely cross down through there today. So that's creating that little extra um, weight on that resistance in the chart. So just watch that closely. As we approach those levels of resistance, that's where the bears could entrench themselves for a defense. Then let's take a look at um, our SPY. Now our SPY, a much better situation here in the SPY. Obviously, we didn't crash through the 200-day moving average. We did eventually hold here at our 50-day moving average. So let's take a look here in the chart. If we um, draw a line right across here, a nice straight line, notice that we've held right in there on that support and on that 50-day moving average. And that is encouraging for the SPY. So keep an eye on that. However, we do have this little bit of a downtrend in play that we're going to have to continue to deal with. And once again, I think I would like to see a little bit more consolidation in here a little bit more rest 
but I'm not sure what the emotional nature of this market right now if we're actually going to get that. So if we start to rally, let's watch some price levels. We have a little tiny price level right here. Now it doesn't mean a whole lot. We could certainly push right through that pretty easily. But if we do, then take a look at this one right here. This right here could be that next really challenging area where we could see the bears kind of um, tie up some um, space in here and defend in that area. If we can push through there, we have that resistance level right through here. So kind of keep that in mind. We, we don't have a real clear path forward and with the uncertainties that we have out there in the market could create a little bit of trouble heading into the weekend. And then let's take a look at the QQQ. Now the Qs, um, we have an ugly little inverted head and shoulders top here and um, we made some money here in RWO. We've got a bear call credit spread on this trade. And um, I know some of the folks in RWO actually went directionally short on that, made some nice money um, on that QQQ move. But one of the things I wanna point out here, is, although we had a really good reaction yesterday uh, to um, the Dow and IWM and, and S&P 500, it was a bit on the muted side here in the QQQ. Now, we didn't quite test this level of price support, so it begs the question, will we need, will we need another push down here in the NASDAQ to test that level in here um, before we can move on up? We do have to keep in mind that we do have that head and shoulders and that we do have a confirmed downtrend because we did make that new low in that chart. And that possibility that we may have to rest in here is pretty substantial in this chart. We, we could see a, a nice area of rest here in the market. Um, I can't say that that's going to happen, but that would be a nice thing to see. Just kind of spill off some of that volatility here in the market. But if we rally back, let's keep a close eye on some of these resistance levels in the chart. We have that downtrend resistance here in the chart, and we certainly have a little resistance right in here. If we can push through that level, and I think there is a possibility that we could do that today, then let's really watch this level up in here. That's going to be an interesting place for the market to deal with. We've got that double whammy in here of the price resistance of the chart and the downtrend that'll all come together right there. So watch carefully if we push back up. One thing I would really like to see if we're going to be bullish is we need that, we need uh, this candle, you know, one of the uh, uh, a bullish a bullish look in the market is when we have a big ugly candle like this is if we can breach back above halfway on that count, uh, candle. And we just weren't able to quite do that yesterday. So that leaves just a little tiny bit of question here in the NASDAQ. And, and you have to wonder, will we see that possible pushback? And I think the employment situation number will be a big, um, uh, well, if it comes in good, we could push on through. If it comes in bad, that might really lend um, that uh, ourselves to that push to the downside. So watch carefully here. And then if we take a look at our IWM, the Russell, taking a look at the Russell, we had a nice inside day yesterday and we did breach 50% of that candle. So that is a nice improvement in that chart. But let's keep in mind, we have a lot of work here to do. Certainly we have some price resistance in this chart right through here. And um, fortunately, it, there's a lot of price congestion in here. Doesn't mean we can't push up through it, but it may be a little bit more challenging to do so. And then if we can get back up here, let's watch some of these levels up in here where we've got lots of little resistance um, in that chart. So as we push back up in here, watch for that resistance and keep in mind our downtrend here is in play. And as we push back up, there could be some challenges here by those bears as we move along. Let's take a look at our T, or excuse me, let's take a look at our VIX. Now our VIX pulled back yesterday, but I gotta be honest, I would have expected with such a big move in the market that we would have seen more of a pullback in the VIX. So fear still remains relatively high. We're coming in here about a 28 handle here on the VIX. And what that means is that we're holding above some, um, some pretty big support areas in the chart. What I'd like to see 
if we're going to be bullish in the market, we need to see that fear drop out a little bit more. So watch that carefully. This might be just that little bit of concern heading into the weekend that folks say, you know, there's just too much uncertainty. I want to close out trades. I want to take profits. I want to be safe heading into the weekend. That could create a little bit more selling um, in the market, maybe later this afternoon. So watch that carefully if we don't get that inspiration here today in that employment situation number. Keep in mind, we have this upside trend in here and um, we need to really break this down quite a ways to come back into that trend. And I got to tell you, I've mentioned this for a long, long time. This 20 area um, in the chart, there is a lot of price support in that in that area of the chart. So if we uh, push back, we're gonna wanna watch that area pretty closely. We don't wanna be catching a bounce in fear in that area. Let's take a look at our T2122. Now T2122 was interesting yesterday because we had such a big response back in um, the Dow, IWM, um, SPY, but take a look here we really didn't get a major improvement in T2122. Now, I honestly see that as a good sign because one of the things I don't like to see is when we go from an oversold condition and then we just get all emotional and whip all the way back up because what that generally means is we get that push back down. And we saw that right here in the chart where we had that push down, we whipped up and then bang, just got hammered in that move to the downside. That's a lot of dip buyers got hurt there um, on that move. So what I like to see is I like to see that little bit more of a gradual move. And what that might mean in here is that we might actually get that little settling in the market, spill off some of that emotion and we kind of consolidate a little bit. Now I'm not saying that that's true and I'm not trying to predict that. I'm just suggesting it is interesting with such a big move yesterday. We didn't really show a massive improvement in T2122. So we are still in that oversold region here in the market which gives us if we get that good report today in employment situation it does give us that plenty of upside room to move um, in that chart so if we can move on up that would be wonderful to see as well but i just hope we don't shoot back up because that's going to probably um, lead us to that next big ugly pushback in the market so calm down a little bit let's see if we can get um, a direction set, but let's do it a little bit more in a um, in a logical manner instead of all emotional manner. Let's take a look at our T2108. Now, this is interesting. Um, yesterday was such a big move in the market. Our T2108 improved, but not that much. This is the number of stocks holding above their 40-day moving average. And notice in here, um, 28%, 27% um, of the stocks are holding above that 40 day moving average. Now I gotta tell you, that doesn't necessarily give you that big warm and fuzzy, does it? Um, that we had this massive recovery in the market. So that still brings that little question in here. Mm, what happens if we trip and fall? So watch carefully um, um, on those numbers. And then T2107, is very much the same. Um, it just adds that little bit of, hmm. Um, we did have an improvement in that um, T2107, but notice only 36% of the stocks are above their 200 day moving average. And though we're recovering, we have lots of resistance in this chart above um, to, to kind of work through. So keep a close eye on that. Um, again, it's just that little question. If we were to stumble, how quickly we could easily push back down toward those market lows. Um, I think I think this is showing us that possibility is there because we have so much weight pulling us lower. So keep a close eye. And then if we take a look at our T2101, you guys know I've been talking about this for a long, long time. Um, I, I've not been concerned with T2101 unless we break above that wedge. And we have done that. We did that in a big way. Even on the rally back yesterday, the market breadth continued to move higher. Um, so kind of an interesting situation here in the market. Now, 
if if we get that really big bullish move i would expect this to pull back and we could certainly come right back down here and continue to wind around in this wedging pattern but if we happen to pull back and we happen to hold some higher lows in market breadth that may mean uh, more trouble um, in the future here that bigger correction potentially coming in the market so watch that carefully here in t2101 let's take a look at our economic calendar for today and our economic calendar we've got that employment situation number that i've been yakking about all morning um, that's going to be an interesting one now there has been a slew of reports it's just like every single day this week there's been a report oh we're expecting a great number on friday okay great you know um but one of the things that concerns me is when we hype something too much there's a, too big of an anticipation um on that number and if that number were to disappoint that could be a problem for us we could see that emotional move south so watch that carefully in here if it comes in strong awesome we may be able to continue this um uh, relief rally um, at least into um, uh, most of Friday. And I kind of wonder if there might be a little bit of profit taking heading into the weekend, just because everyone wants to get a little security with all the uncertainty that we have out there. And then um, we've got factory orders and ISM. I don't expect them to move the market a whole lot, but it's certainly worth paying attention to them. We're going to be focused on this prior to market open and how we respond to that. That could set the stage for the day. Now, our futures were down, substantially down overnight, but they've picked up and they're trying to push positive and they're trying to look positively into this number this morning. So hopefully the hype on that number is correct and it comes in strong. Let's take a look um, at our earnings calendar. Now our earnings calendar, pretty light day today. We only have, uh, I think, 14 companies listed on the calendar and uh, 12 companies actually, and a, and a number of those um, um, are unconfirmed reports. So the notables that I have for the day are only three. We've got Big Lots will be reporting today. It looks like they um, let a little bit of wild price action here on that report. Looks like they're trying to resolve a little bit higher here on Big Lots. Keep an eye on that. We've got uh, GCO. Whoops, GCO. GCO um, reporting today. Looks like we're getting a little pop and drop on that one this morning here. So keep an eye on GCO and HIBB. Those would be the notables for today. So keep an eye on those. Looks like HIBB trying to move a little bit higher here as well on its report. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me a quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up. So you'll, you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be worthy, to be helpful, please do me a favor, click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. That helps me out a ton. And I truly, truly appreciate it. Remember guys, it's the engagement with the, with the video that makes the difference it's not the subscribers so much it's it's that engagement that helps um, the algorithm show those videos to more folks um, out there so thank you to everyone who does take the time to do that you guys are awesome let's take a look at um, some of these stocks that could be setting up and I got to tell you guys we got to be really really careful here because we have um, that two-sided look here in the market that could be interesting now I did have a suggestion and, and one of the things I don't haven't talked about a lot for a long long time is really anything short because we've been in a bullish uptrend but that is possibly changing here so what we want to watch here as we rally back up and these are the things that I watch for um, um, right way options we went short um, on on the QQQ the other day made some nice money in that move to the downside and I've been holding some short trades for this downside move in the market that I was anticipating now one of my favorite trade patterns ever is what I call the blue ice failure. And I didn't give it that name. My partner, Rick Sadler, gave it the name. He's the guy who invented the pattern. Um, and it is one of my favorite patterns where we push down in the chart 
rally back toward that 50-day moving average and then we fail along that 50-day moving average. Now what you'll most often see is you'll see that 50-day moving average starting to flatten, starting to turn, and then we rally up into there and that's where it's all over and we start moving to the downside. So watch that carefully. Those are going to be my favorite patterns. That's going to be the place that I'm going to be looking for short trades as we rally back. I can't say that that's actually going to occur. I'm not trying to predict that we're going to fail here. What I'm saying is I'll be watching for patterns and charts that look just like that for potential shorts. Right now, short trades are a little bit of a chase to the downside because we move so swiftly and quickly to the downside. So there's not much out there, in my opinion, to take directionally short just yet, except for some speculation. I want to see those rally back to resistance levels and failure patterns occur in the market. So kind of keep that in mind. Now, if we take a look at some of these stocks, um, the reason I'm kind of looking at more of the bullish right now is because I think there is still that opportunity that we could get that relief rally to the upside. So I've mentioned Ford before, and I'm going to continue to mention Ford as long as it continues to hold this nice little pattern. Mentioned it yesterday. We had this nice little push here. Let's see if we can get some bullishness in the market. We might actually get that to perk on out of that chart and look on higher. So um, take a look at that. By the way, I, I did mention NIO yesterday and uh, something to keep an eye on for that bounce back up. I know this has been one of the market favorites out there for a long time. But now we heard yesterday and you can see we had a big reaction here in the market yesterday that NIO is being, um, shall we say, strongly encouraged to delist from the United States. Um, China is asking a whole bunch of companies to delist from the United States. And, um, I, you know, over there, um, uh, they, they try to make it sound like it's a suggestion. Um, it's likely not a suggestion. Uh, do it. So watch that very closely. We'll be really, really careful with Chinese issue stocks right now. They are dangerous. And I did mention that yesterday, that they are dangerous if you have an appetite for some of that Chinese um those Chinese issues because, uh, boy, there's a lot of a uh, lot of things going on um, over there, creating some angst in these charts. So watch that closely. Um, other places that you might want to look, take a look at some stocks that are extremely oversold in the short term. Take a look at PayPal. Now I mentioned this yesterday to folks in Rightway Options that we. Um, I'm going to start looking. We've got a lot of stocks well below their 200-day moving averages. If you take a look here, we were below our 200-day. We're below our 50-day here in PayPal. Now, pay systems have been hammered really hard. And when we start seeing those kind of moves in the market, I like to look for big levels of price support in the chart to see if there is that opportunity for a potential bounce. And yesterday, I laid out a couple ideas for some bull put credit spreads um, on um, a PayPal as a possibility. It did catch a bounce in here, but what I want to see before I get bullish on this, this I don't want to be speculating on a directional trade here to the upside. What I want to see is I want to see a break of that downtrend and a hold. Give me first evidence of an upside trend and then I might be interested in taking some trades along here. So when we get this really oversold condition in the market, I tend to look for those stocks that have been really drugged down in a market like that and start looking for those opportunities that could set up in those charts. So just a just a, I guess maybe a little bit more education than, than chart show today, but kind of keep an eye on charts like that for those recoveries that could certainly begin in the market. Now, um, let me point this out here. Um, right here, here's that pattern that I was talking about. We break below the 50-day moving average. We hold it as resistance, and there's our failure. And we did it once again right here, and there's our failure to the downside. That's why that's one of my favorite patterns. So we need to rally back in the market before we catch some of those shorting patterns in charts. And they could show up everywhere all at once. So watch carefully for that. If this rally does not take us right back up above the 50 and pushing us, 
to new record highs. If we can't make it there this time, a lot of these patterns could be setting up. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you a wonderful, wonderful weekend. We'll see you right back here bright and early Monday morning. I wish you all great success today and talk to you soon.